Unfortunately, you won't be able to buy this boot from Parkhurst because I bought this as a development sample from their seconds and samples page. But wait until later this Northern Hemisphere summer when Parkhurst will launch the fully developed version of this. Let's see what you might expect. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. My name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands I live on, the Wajik people. This is a development sample of a model that Andrew Savisco is developing in Portugal. I'm going to go through a short review of this boot, but I'll also go into what you might expect when development is completed and this model launches in the Northern Hemisphere summer. I'm not actually sure that this will be called the Allen uh, Parkhurst's usual name for their plain toe service boot, because it is, or at least this version, is significantly different from the Allen boots that they produced in their uh, upstate New York partner factory and later from their partner Spanish factory. It is still in that uh, six inch service boot pattern with a simple set of leather pieces forming the plain toe vamp, the two quarter pieces and the one piece backstay. It still has the Allen-like eyelet and speed hook combination and a flattish sole and a low heel base. I'll just go through some of the elements of this boot. What makes it different to the Parkhurst Allen boots that we know uh, before I then tell you about what Andrew says about production. For those of you who don't know about Parkhurst uh, or their Allen and Richmond boots, I'll just quickly hop through their history. I say there, <laughs> but I really mean his, because Parkhurst is all Andrew Savisco. You can check out my interview with him up there. He was a financial analyst who from uh, knowing him and talking to him, I think had two passions, celebrating American heritage quality boots and his family. So he started Parkhurst in 2018, uh, based out of Buffalo in New York State. And really he totally bootstrapped it himself with no Kickstarter campaigns or venture capital investors. For those who have never started a business, let me tell you what a brave decision that was. But in his interview, he told me that an important factor for him was to not lose control of his central vision. At any rate, being a small batch manufacturer where he could only uh, afford to buy limited supplies of hides and materials and make small batches of boots through a uh, subcontracted factory in Batavia, New York, it was a slow start for Parkhurst. But the brand was noticed amongst boot circles and the brand was featured by Stridewise uh, and the Stitch Down podcast. Unfortunately for Andrew, as the brand gained momentum, COVID struck. And over the couple of worst years of COVID, his US suppliers and even the factory shut down permanently. Luckily though, through his uh, good relationships with other partner factories and suppliers, he was introduced to a Spanish factory and moved his production in Spain uh, in 2022. He remains a limited production run manufacturer, which means that mostly uh, restocks of uh, styles don't always get replaced when they're gone. From time to time, uh, popular styles like the Spruce Kudu uh, or the Natural Dublin might come back. Now this is painful for customers and reviewers, <laughs> but to an extent it is an asset because the boots then become quite collectible. Andrew tells me that in working in Europe, he has found that much of the connections there between factories and contacts in the industry is due to everyone knowing everyone else. If someone isn't or can't do or supply anything, they will typically know someone else who does. So he found that even as he reached out to people, he had already been introduced and the reception was different from a cold call. Which leads me to Portugal, where these are being developed. Why Portugal? Andrew tells me that since he relaunched in 22-23, uh, uh, he intended to produce where the experienced labor, technology and machinery is situated to make a quality product. The factory in Portugal has the machinery to do the double row stitch down, and he wasn't able to find another subcontractable factory globally, with whom he's spoken at least, who has the combination of machinery, experienced labor, and the technology to make these on a production scale. 
I'm going to leave a link below to the Parkhurst Hour story page, which I highly recommend you read because Andrew describes his history, uh, his manufacturing philosophy, and his future plans much better than I can. So, uh, bearing in mind this is a development model that I'm not even sure would be called the Allen, let's go through uh, some of the features, especially after I've been wearing this for about three months. Uh, it's built in Portugal on top of a Spanish-made proprietary rubber commando outsole, similar to the Vibram 430 pattern with small inboard lugs. Uh, almost ever since he started, Andrew has found that branded outsoles were difficult to place on his boots because of his combination lasts, uh, especially once sizes went over 10 and a half or 11. I remember uh, on the Facebook Parkhurst Enthusiast page run by Jace Hodges, uh, many larger footed friends of mine bemoaning that at their size 11, they couldn't get the Ridgeway outsoles on the earlier boots. The proprietary outsoles will be known to Parkhurst enthusiasts anyway, because they have been used for a couple of years now, uh, fitting all the sizes offered. This model is a double row stitch down model, not the usual Parkhurst Goodyear Welt construction. The uppers are lasted, and then the front edge is flared out and sewn directly onto the midsole and the outsole without the intervening use of a welt. One row of stitches goes through uh, the uppers and the midsole, and the second row goes through the uppers, midsole, and outsole. On the inside, the insole is also veg tanned, uh, glued on top of the uh, midsole with a steel shank inserted between the heel and the ball of the foot. There's a heel sock liner, slightly padded to protect your feet from, I'm guessing, the clinched nails uh, at the heel. It's a 270 degree construction, so the back end has the uppers turned in and glued, stitched and nailed to the midsole, similar to a Goodyear welt, but again, leaving out the welt. To many boot enthusiasts, this is a more traditional construction method, and it's said to be more water resistant, even uh, more so than a Goodyear welted boot, because Again, there are no stitches that uh, go from the outside to the inside, and the flared out uppers wick moisture away from the uh, joints between parts. The midsole is veg tan leather, and the heels are three stacks of veg tan leather with the lugged heel top lift on top. Uh, the interesting thing about the construction is that even when his boots were made in New York, Andrew always finished off the heels and the final touches. He still does this today despite Parker's boots being made in Spain and Portugal, except that once where he fixed things in his basement at home, <laughs> he now actually has a storeroom and workshop in New York. When the boots are shipped to him, partially completed, he burnishes them, sands the edges, cuts the heel uh, sock liners and glues them on, uh, attaches the heels and top lifts before he sends each pair out. He says that unfortunately, he hasn't found a factory that can do everything 100% perfect 100% of the time, or even 100% to specification uh, to his values, uh, which he needs to do because of the specificity of the product and the customer demands. The factories he's worked with come close, but he still feels that he has the need to put on the finishing touches himself. The upper's leather is a full veg tanned burgundy leather from Tempesti Tannery in Italy, which has been around for 70 years. It has a very firm feel to it, like all veg tans, but also feels supple and, and also full of oils, uh, and it measures about two millimeters in thickness. The vamp, which does seem to crease quickly, and to some extent it does look like a bit of loose grain, um, but I think a full veg tan uh, does tend to do that anyway. My Grantstone Battle Lassie Settle Tan diesels are displaying a similar crease pattern. Uh, it's an extremely comfortable leather to wear, and yet I feel uh, gives me all the support I need at the ankles and around my foot. It, it's a substantial leather. The vamp is lined with leather, but the shaft is not. All the hardware is attached extremely firmly and they're backed, which I prefer, less chance of scratching the tongue or your, or your hands even. Uh, like all Parker's boots, the tongue is a semi-gusseted uh, tongue up to the last eyelet, uh, just before the speed hooks. The stitching all over is quite good. It's not as fine as, say, a Weiberg or an Alden or even a Grant Stone, but as a rugged boot, it's close. It's clean uh, and it's even without any missed stitches or loose ends. And let's not forget, uh, this is a development sample. 
The stitching on the double row stitch down is secure, but not particularly pretty. <laughs> the rows are not parallel, and they do meet here and there, and the stitch per inch density moves around a bit. When I raised this with Andrew, he said he was looking at that, but he found it funny that people cared so much about the stitch density because an extremely high stitch density on a stitch down boot just means that when you resole, the cobbler has to uh, have an extra effort and more problems trying to fit the new stitches into the existing holes. I guess that's a fair point, but I'd still like to see some neat finishing. Now the last, the foot-shaped mold around which the upper's leather is lasted. Parkhurst is famous for their uh, comfortable combination 602 last, where the heel and the waist uh, are narrow, uh, but the ball is wide. Uh, even as the toes round into an almond shape, the last provides comfort and snug fitting, so much so that uh, Nick's Handmade Boots did a collaboration using the 602 last in a version of their Falcon boot. See up there. Now, this is a new last, which is a derivation of the 602M last. Andrew hasn't named it yet, and it is still in development, but I see a roomier toe box, uh, more rounded, and more of a sprung toe, and perhaps a little more volume across the instep, giving uh, this more of a work boot feel than a sleek service boot. Some of you may not like that, but it is an interesting shape. Apart from that, it feels the same as the 602. Sizing, oh, sizing. <laughs> Sizing in this development model is in European sizing and is true to size. I'm a 8.5 US and that converts to European 41.5, which Europeans will then convert to UK sizing of 7.5. I normally wear Parkhurst, like all my other heritage style boots, in a US 8. But being uh, European sized in getting this boot, I ordered size 7.5. That's a full size down from US Brannock. Uh, only it's not. It's UK 7.5, which is US 8.5 on the Brannock. <laughs> Confused? Don't worry. When this goes into production, Andrew will name the sizes in the US format, but a half down from Brannock. So this will be called an 8, so that it is uniform with all of his Parker's boots. As for comfort, in this development build, the last is comfortable, if not as sleek as the 602. The leather midsole and leather inserts inside give a good deal of initial squish before they shape to your feet, which even after only a few months has already done so for me. The firm but flexible leather heel counter snugly grips your heel in place. They are not foam, squishy, comfortable, but they give you good shock absorption and a comfortable stance. But what should you expect when they come out in full production? Well, uh, they will continue to be made in Portugal. I'm not sure what it will be called, but it's probably going to be called the something stitch down boot or the Parker stitch down boot, whether it be a stitch down Allen or another name relating to Buffalo or New York uh, or Andrew's family. The last is going to be based on this one with, I believe, further slimming and shaping, and it uh, will be given a new name. The uppers will continue to be supplied by Tempesti in this full grain, full veg tan. I think Andrew hopes to offer it in four or five versions of this leather, which will be really interesting because it just feels gorgeous. I guess you will see improvements in finish, maybe including the cleaner stitch down uh, stitching. But I do get the feeling <laughs> Andrew may not have a Viberg like finish high on his priorities. This will be a rugged service boot rather than the sleeker Allens and Richmonds. If this is a new model to add uh, to the Allen, the Richmond, or the Delaware, uh, see my video of the Delaware up here, then I expect different variations might arise. The Parkhurst uh, variations often, for example, vary between a single piece or a two piece backstay. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the production runs. I don't know how much they'll sell for. I bought these, uh, this development sample for 328 US. So I imagine that they'll come out similar to his other boots at around the high 300s. Let's see. At those prices, I count it as good value and I am going to get one. So what do you think? I actually thought of not reviewing this boot because to be fair, it is a development model. And so any faults I point out may not be there in the production runs. But I thought I'd get this video up here 
so that when I get a production model and review it, I can compare and see what's changed and hopefully what's improved. And you can too by sort of referring back to this one. I don't get paid by Parkhurst and I buy all my boots, so I, I genuinely like Parkhurst's designs, styles and leather selections. I've said before that if you can't afford a Viberg service boot, but you like the service boot, look, uh, service boot looks and envy the Viberg variation of uppers leather, you can get the same effect in a Parkhurst. I still think so, even if this pair is a little less sleek looking than the normal Parkhurst boots on the original 602 last. Anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to click on like and subscribe. Rest assured, when the production run comes out, I'll be buying a pair and I'll bring them to you. Until then, take care out there and see you soon.